Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Last time I made a video about forts, it was about the interactions between various kinds of weapons and armor pieces. But this time I'm going to focus on a less frequently used kind of defense, the energy shield. Why is it less frequently used? Because it's a constant drain on your energy supply, that's why. Two long pieces of it will drain roughly as much energy as is given by an upgraded power turbine. Another disadvantage is that there are no energy shield doors. I, I guess you can't just turn it off. Whatever. And finally, because it's so expensive and, well, restrictive, you can't really cover your base with it. So, no matter what even if shields were the best thing, um, it's not a complete comprehensive defense for your base. But let's see how these uh, pieces react to these various kinds of weapons. Well, a normal machine gun can barely hurt wood bracing, so it's not too surprising that they have no effect at all against these energy shield pieces. What about its upgraded armor shredding version, the Gatling Gun? Also no effect whatsoever. A normal sniper bounces off. An armor piercing sniper turns out to also be a shield piercing sniper. It still has enough power to go through one piece of armor, although not very far after that. Now, one of the things specifically mentioned in the material slot is how it deflects lasers, so let's, let's just have a demonstration of that. Yep, it can even reflect multiple times, although I believe it stops at three or four. So, the other thing it mentions is that it is disabled by explosives. Well, we have some mortars here, we have a cannon and some missiles, so let's let's try it out. First, the unupgraded incendiary mortar. Does not actually disable the shields, which is a little surprising to me. However, it hurts them pretty badly. I'd say that if not shot down, three incendiary mortars will be able to knock down shields with okay reliability. Now the heavy mortar, well, let's take a look. Ooh! Well, that's uh, one definition of disable, alright. So, that effect does not need too much description. Shields simply cannot handle heavy mortar shots. And if you played the tutorial, you also know that well, in case you haven't, I'll just show you the effect before explaining. Yeah, shields stand no chance whatsoever against swarm missiles. I believe that leaves only the cannon. Now since this is a really heavy, piercing, explosive kind of weapon, it should have a really strong effect. But it doesn't really. This is the only weapon in the game that actually has the disabling effect. That uh, repair thing refers to how long it'll take before the shield comes back up. And while it's down, other weapons will pass through it. The actual damage to it is not that strong, less than half, making shields a fairly effective defense against cannons as well. So if someone likes to go straight for factory weapons and try to get a quick base kill, uh, a set of shields around the load-bearing struts will prove a pretty effective defense, I think. The only thing is uh, you'll still have to take attacks against other parts of your base that are maybe a little bit less vital. I think that just about sums it up. 
But since we have these missile weapons here, we have an opportunity to test something else out. You see, in the last video, I neglected to demonstrate what these things did against ordinary armor pieces. So let's, let's take a quick look. Alright, well, that is... Okay. The problem that I've seen with swarm missiles in videos is that people only use one at a time. And I can kind of understand that because in most cases you're sacrificing a space for a mine when you build one of these. Unfortunately, one of them is just going to cause your opponent to require the repair right click every time you use one. Two of them though, that's some reliable pressure. Now let's let's try out this warhead. I, you probably know what it does, but I gotta. So it only directly destroys one piece of steel armor. Uh, that hardly matters though because the area of effect around it is huge. You could follow that up with a Gatling or I don't know, really any kind of follow up. Mortars, even incendiary mortars would be okay there because uh, you'd probably just catch a huge part of their base on fire, especially if there's background bracing there. So, and just just for the sake of completeness, since y you can probably guess what a warhead does to shields, but just for fun. Yeah, so any shields cut in its area of effect are done. And what's even better is that armor is not necessarily uh, enough protection for your core when you're dealing with warheads, because the AoE can often reach the core regardless of what's in the way. So uh, be sure to keep those machine gun defenses up, okay? And now that's finally the end. Thanks for watching all the way through. And uh, let me know if there's something else you want to see in one of these videos. I'm happy to take criticism or other kinds of feedback. Later! Tooltip specifically says that lasers are reflected off of energy shields, so let's see that in action. Um, that was pretty spectacular. That's gonna put a wrench in the rest of the demonstration, isn't it? Yep.